we had finished a whole bunch of shows after Van Dyke. And then we came back and we were doing Love American Style the last year it was on. And uh, not knowing what the next job would be. And the agent, agent called and said, Norman Lear wants to talk to you about producing Sanford and Son. I said, why? Because we had never written it, had never talked. I knew Norman and Bud, but we never talked much about it. And we went in and saw Norman, and he said, would you like to produce Sanford and Son, which was a hit show. It's like saying to somebody, would you like to eat? <laughs> it was a job, we paid well. And uh, Norman, for his reasons, wanted us, asked us to produce it. So we said, sure, of course. So now we take the job and we move out to Burbank. And Red is in Mexico on a hiatus from the last year, from the end of the second year. This is going to be the third year. And he decides to hold out for some more money, which he had done the first two years and gotten, but now. They said, no, it's not right, Red. We gave you the raise. What you're asking for is too much. And he says, then I ain't coming back. So now we're sitting there. We've written a couple of shows. And Norman calls and says, you guys, will you want to produce the show without Red? With the, the gang, but not Red. I said, I want to produce the show anyway. I want to eat. I want to have money to pay for my kids' clothes, Norman. He said, okay, because NBC said if, you want, if you'll do it they'll, put it, they'll take a chance. So now we write three shows and start to shoot one of them, and Red decides he better come back. He's not going to get it, so we get a call. He'll be back Monday. Now, he had fired the previous producer for a reason nobody knew. That was Aaron Rubin was his. Aaron Rubin, again, was one of the best writers, producers, nicest people in the world. He had created uh, The Andy Griffith Show and had written the first two years of Sanford and produced it. But Red was very sensitive about things, and evidently one day, uh, Aaron came in wearing a sweater that reminded Red of his father or something, and he said, I don't want to see him anymore. And that was the end of that. It was a terrible mistake. Well, it turned out it wasn't so terrible, but so that was it. Now we know that. What's he going to think of us, who produced three shows without him, starring Grady and his son and Damon? Here comes luck. Shirley and I have several best friends, Ron and Sheila Clark are two of them, but Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, before she died, of course, were two others, and they were in Mexico. Now, coincidentally, they get on the same plane with Red coming back to L.A. Red sees Edie, he's in love with her because she, when she was a single, performing alone, opened doors for him to perform as a stand-up before her. They wouldn't let him in black because he was black. And she insisted that he be the performer. Well, he couldn't do enough for her. She sits down next to him on the plane and says, Boy, are you lucky our best friend is producing your show. So now he's stuck. <laughs> so we met him very reserved. By the end, I'd say maybe three weeks we were friends. Uh, he was an amazing man. And uh, he, he was to, would have great stories to tell. And loved us because we didn't drive him crazy about being where he would call. He would go home on the weekend, home being Las Vegas, where he had to be, which was lucky for us because he had to be there for a midnight show on Friday. We taped the show on Friday. So he had to be out of the studio by 8.30 to get a helicopter to LAX to get a plane to Vegas. So that was it. We had to be done. Anyway, he, uh, he was, had a bunch of sicknesses, of problems with his throat and his knees and all that. And I would bring him or bring a doctor to him very often. 
and it was like a father-son kind of a relationship. But he knew I was a softy, so from Vegas we would get a call Monday when he was supposed to be in the studio at 10 o'clock. I can't make it, turtle, I got a, my dog died. My, my, my throat. <laughs> I said, okay, when can you make it? I'll give me a first thing tomorrow, good. Then Wednesday, then Thursday. The last couple of shows he came in the day of the show. <laughs> we had cue cards and he was perfect. So to, to get upset when there's nothing you can do about whatever it is that's getting you upset, you don't get upset. And, uh, and that was that. Five, uh, we did three great years with him. And then he ended that show himself because of some mistake that the production company made. They didn't call him up to renew his contract by Friday afternoon. Fred Silverman at ABC, the competition, knew that they had to call him by Friday afternoon. And they said, if they don't call you, I'll give you a tremendous amount of money to come over here. And that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And he went over and did a variety show at ABC. ABC wanted him because he was a hit, but more, they wanted him off NBC. So that was that show.